Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and it is currently the weekend. And one of the things I like to do on the weekend is focus on simple, quick and dirty free tools. And that's exactly what we are going to be looking at today. Today we're looking at a product called Voxelator. Now that might sound a little bit familiar if you're reading to this channel is because uh, sometime back around uh, March of 2018, I focused on a product called Pixelator and Voxelator and Pixelator are from the same people. So if you're wondering what Pixelator is all about, it's one of those uh, pixel manipulation kind of software. So what you can do is you can feed in an image and have it get out a pixelated result. You can do the same kind of thing with a photo filter, but this is more of a streamlined and simple kind of version of it. So you can see what we did with Mona in this video. So on the left hand side, you got the original Mona Lisa. You've got a slightly pixelated and an extremely pixelated version. Now you've got fine tuned control over things like the palettes and so on, but that is the gist of what Pixelator was all about. I'll link that video down below if you want to learn more about it. But today what we are actually talking about is Voxelator. Now Voxelator is more of a hands-on tool and the name kind of gives it all away. This is a voxel painting application. It is a free online voxel editing tool. So yes, this is running in my browser. You'll notice if I come here at a full screen, yep, browser application, but don't let that turn you off. That has some advantages. It means you can run it anywhere. You can run it on anything that has a browser. So this runs on Mac, this runs on Linux, this runs on uh, potentially Amiga. Uh, so you name it, you've got a computer that has a capable browser, you can run Voxelator. So what is this guy all about? Well, it's pretty straightforward on the whole. You can come up here and you can draw. So come in here, we'll pick our color. Uh, left click brings up the color selection or right click just pulls it straight from the palette. And then you just start drawing voxels in the world. If there's a voxel in the space you are on top of, it builds on top of it. We could switch out the colors of our voxels like so. Uh, we can just kind of keep drawing shapes. You build on top, you sort of just start drawing and stacking them on top and you can draw shapes in your world. Uh, you right click and you can erase like so. Uh, pretty straightforward on the whole. Uh, your navigation is equally simple. Uh, if you've got a scroll wheel, zoom in, zoom out, or you can hold it down for orbiting like this. Uh, you've got fine control over your camera. You can switch to the front, back, and so on. Um, or you can frame to your selection by selecting uh, show selection like so. And that is kind of the environment. It's a very straightforward. You want to work with voxels. Uh, it, it's got palette controls over here. You've got simple drawing tools. Uh, you have selection tools for uh, selecting a series of voxels. You've got paint tools for switching the colors of a series of voxels. And then we've got basic shapes. So we've got a line tool like so. So you can draw voxels in a line. And of course we can do jaggy lines if we so wish. Uh, then we've got other tools up here such as the box tools for drawing boxes of voxels like so. And then there's one also for um, sphere, which in all honesty, I can't figure out how to actually make it do uh, a spherical voxel. No clue what I'm supposed to do here. I can create spherical uh, squares, but I don't actually know how to make one with depth. But anyways, that is essentially the program. We've also got uh, tools for moving and erasing, but it, it's a quick and dirty voxel application. Now you don't have animation in here. You do have layer support and you've got a couple of tools up here. So you can come up here to edit and then we can do things like we can soften the edges. We can apply it to just the corner. So if we want to round out our corner, check right here when I'm done. So we can click that and then boom, it'll round out your edges. So you got other options here so we could flip and mirror, rotate. We can smooth out the faces. Um, yeah, that's kind of the, the essential idea. So let's do a couple of iterations of smooth. And well, I guess that mostly just erased things because I got a huge flat plane. But yeah, that's kind of the gist of it. We could also come up here, project. Uh, you do have the option of loading in um, Vox files. We can also bring in, uh, so there's some import options. And the weird thing that I found here is I can't actually get this to work. I can get the one to work. So I can come up here, we can pick an image to palette, and then we could just pick, um, We'll pick a simple image. So there's not a lot going on with this image, but you see what it did is it went through and grabbed all of the individual um, colors that it found in that image and created a color palette out of it. At the same time, we should also be able to do uh, an image to voxels. Um, so I come in here, I have no idea what image I'm just selecting here. We'll see in the, uh, apparently nothing. Here, let me try and find image to voxels. Um, yeah, I got no idea what any of these things actually are. Sponza, okay, I know what that is. There we go. So this should, in theory, be able to create a voxel uh, out of the particular image. I have never actually gotten this to work. So you see it created a new image for us. 
uh, but it, it never actually, unfortunately, goes anywhere. So this might be a bit of a placeholder feature. Uh, we do have a progress bar down here, um, but you know what? I'll pause it and see what happens here. Okay, so uh, I let it run for a while. As you can see, we're getting to the very, very end here. It's been running for a long time. So I actually thought this feature did not work at all. But the reality seems to be that this feature is just exceedingly slow. Now, I'm not 100% certain when I get to the end of this progress bar. We're so close. But I have no idea if it's actually going to end up working. But functionally, this is so slow as to be borderline. I'll call it an experimental feature at this point in time. But I'll be interested in seeing exactly what this happens. But it, it's been probably probably an hour now. So uh, I'm going to pause it, let it do its thing, but hopefully we get some results. You've got to be kidding me. All right. So after an hour, the progress bar got to the end and then, and then I got this bloody page. So uh, yeah, that part I'm not impressed with by any means. I just wasted an hour of my life. So it does seem at least on an advanced image, just don't bother with that import. Now, hopefully it's a feature or, or, or function that comes in the future and becomes much more usable right now. At least in my experience, it did not work great for me, but let's see what happens with you guys. If you try it out yourself, let me know in the comments down below. But anyways, let's go back to what we were talking about here. So what we can go ahead, we'll show you one of the examples in action. Let's say we modeled this. It's a tree, pretty straightforward, pretty clean, pretty simple. And once you've got your tree to work with, you know, hold down shift by the way and do a, a pan come on pan around orbit out there we go so once we've got something we've got to work with what we've got is a number of options for what we can do with it so i'm going to come up here go to the export and you'll see we have a couple of different options poy gltf dae or collada format obj or stl or you can export out just the uh palette the, the color palette being used here uh, as a png file but in this case i'm going to go ahead we'll export this out as a gltf file um sure unnamed mesh We'll dump out it with a texture. Uh, so you can set culling as you wish. And we'll just go ahead and export that out. All right. So now we have something to go ahead and work with. Why did it export as a palette? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Multiple. So we got the texture. We got the GLTF file. All right. So now what I'm going to do, fire up trusty old Blender, which is not installed. Okay. All right, a quick install later. Here I am with Blender. Let's get rid of the cube and let's import our generated GLTF file. Now, what I found is the tessellation on these is a little less than ideal, uh, but the results are pretty good. So we're going to go here, GLTF. Uh, that was in my downloads folder right here. Let's open it up. And there we go. So there is our um, polygonal model. We'll let this switch over there with the texturing as we saw it in the one space. So there we go. Looks pretty good. So here we go back over, flip back. All right, there's my download page. Here we go. So there is our uh, source generated file. And here is the 3D exported version of it. All told, looking pretty solid. Workflow works out just fine. Uh, the results are pretty solid. If we go ahead, if we go into edit mode on this guy, you'll notice it worked out well with a really cubey shape, but you do get some weird tessellation. Like you see, uh, with the way some of these shapes are formed, I would have liked to have seen a solid edge here, more like Tetris blocks. Uh, but you know what? Beggars can't be choosers. It's a pretty good mesh to work with. Um, you'll just find if you create less blocky shapes, you kind of get more of a triangle strip fan kind of result. But all told, results come out looking pretty solid. They look pretty much exactly like what went in, plus or minus the lighting differences, obviously. Uh, but yeah. So if, if you're looking for a voxel-based workflow and you want to work with something in the browser, the uh, voxelator is definitely a way to go. We got, again, a couple of different um, options for exporting out. Uh, GLTF and OBJ are directly supported in pretty much most modern game images, including uh, Unreal Unity and Godot. So it's one, one definite way to get things out of here as well. Also, you can save your project as a vox file. And vox, again, should be the standard format for Magic of Voxels. So getting your stuff from here into other voxel applications should be no big deal. Now, interestingly enough, uh, when I do import Vox files into here, I have had some issues with it. But again, it's a tool under the development. So it'll be interesting to see where that ultimately goes. Same with this guy. So the image to uh, palette stuff I've had work great. The image to voxel stuff, 
slightly different mileage there. So let me know actually if you try that out, uh, what your actual experience on that one is. All right, so that is it. That is uh, Voxelator, a completely free browser-based, browser-based, browser-based voxel editing application. Pretty straightforward and clean what you can do. Some nice potential for stuff in the future. It runs well enough. You've got uh, layer support over here. If you want to, you know, get rid of what we just did, you can easily dump out a layer. You can have multiple layers. You can duplicate layers and so on. Pretty pretty good tool going on here and I'd be interested to hear what you think of it. Also, if you didn't check it out before, check out Pixelator, a way of taking uh, normal images and creating pixelated results. Let me know what you think about that as well. Comments down below and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.